Hello, everyone. My name is Ade Jean-Baptiste. I am a third year here. I'm a junior in the School of Art and Design at Alfred University, um, and I'm from Scarsdale, New York. There is something that's so sort of luscious and juicy about the material. It has this sort of performative appeal, specifically when you're blowing glass, that other mediums don't really have. So this is a two years in the making. So I started this my second semester, my freshman year. And so I had written up the proposal and this was right, and so we were sent home early because of COVID and you know, everyone was home for COVID and then during BLM, right before BLM, I had written an article specifically talking about black glass artists. Based on that article and you know, everything that was going on in the country, I knew the importance um, and specifically the packing that was going to happen because of everything that was going on with George Floyd. And so I wrote the proposal and I remember coming back my sophomore year, I presented the proposal to Angus and to this and dean of students um, in the art school, Dan Napolitano, um, to try to figure out the best way to go about this because I thought it was something that was really important. So the first sort of step was getting the proposal done. Um, and there were multiple drafts that needed to happen. A bunch of people edited it. And so once the proposal was finished, um, we then had to figure out who we wanted to come. And so that was sort of an electoral process. So we came up with a list of artists who were in our purview that we knew of, who we thought would be really interested in the program, who were black glass artists. Don't let this cool off. Put this in the garage. I'm in Kosi Barber. I'm from Chicago and I work for Project Fire and Firebird Community Arts. Uh, I had went to a went to an alternative school and they had glass blowing in their school. And so I guess long story short. I had went on a trip to like Germany uh, that year from the school, from the school opportunities. And I'm like, I should go back to school because I was going to drop out. And yeah, I started doing glass blowing uh, with the glass blowing teacher that was there. This Black Glass Artist series is important because when I got into glass blowing, I ain't think it was no black people in it. Like, I swear to God, I thought I was the only black person that did it. and. I just thought that's what it was. And even uh, later on, I only seen like two other black glass artists. And just uh, being a part of this and, and knowing other black glass artists is just super inspiring because you would think just, um, I don't even know how to word this and I say white people. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just, I just thought just number white people did it. And I didn't think we uh, had nothing to do with this until I actually like learned the history. Like my teacher told me, like, well, what well, she told me that this stuff came from uh, Africa, Egypt, and stuff like that. So it's like it's part of our roots, and most of us don't even know. We think it's we think it's not even our type of sport. And the whole time it is, you know. I put the globe on there because originally I was supposed to like, I was going to make a hand that had a hand coming out the mouth with the globe inside the hand. But I just put the globe on the tongue and it really is for, um, I just like traveling and stuff like that. Cause I done, I done been in so many places doing glass blowing. Like, uh, like I done came to New York so many times, New Jersey, Virginia, uh, Seattle, Florida, all type of places just off glass blowing. And that's what I always wanted to do. I didn't know how I was going to travel when I was a kid. I just knew I wanted to travel. And it's like, it's happening right there. And that's what the really piece is about. It's like right there on the tip of my fingers at my tongue. And I'm like, and it's, I'm just like so excited. I'm addicted to going different places. So Firebird Community Arts is our uh, nonprofit organization with the program that I'm like managing and teach for is called Project Fire. And Project Fire is a youth group that's uh, that's with youth that's been victims of violence. And we teach them how to do glass blowing and also get paid for it and get to sell their art as well. Nice job. My name is Keontae Thomas, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and 
I'm a Project Fire student. I found Project Fire uh, after an incident that I had. I was ba I had basically got shot, and Project Fire was a program that I was introduced to by uh, my TIS. So once I first started blowing glass, it was like, yeah, okay, this is something I want. But I got to meet new people and people that was like very inspiring. And you would never think like you would meet. Like when I first started blowing glass, I didn't know Kosi. I'm dedicated to glass blowing because honestly, um, I'm a person that just like, it's like I, I, ha I learn one thing and just move to the next thing like I'm just I want to learn everything so it's like glass blowing is that opportunity to learn everything because it's like every moment of glass blowing you learning something new no matter if it's about you or someone else so it's like it caught me like in the midst of something I don't know <laughs> but it caught me it caught me and it got me My real name went Quail Biggs, but everybody called me LA. It was crazy, because when I here came to Project Fire, it's like, I was just, I wanted to really find me something to do, right? And this lady, her name was Lisa, her name was Lisa Margulies. Like, she was like, she was like a mentor to me. She had, I had told her, like, I wanted to get in, get a job, like, get, get something going, you know? But I was real young. I couldn't get no job at the time. So I had to find like a program. But she had brought me to the to the studio. And when I came to the studio, it's like, I didn't really like it. Cause I had ended up getting like my clothes dirty and stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm just gonna come back another time. You feel me? But when I, I had left with Lisa and I wasn't with Lisa no more. And then I think I was with like my, I think I was with like a, a mentor that was through Project Fire, like that Brad here gave me through. But this was a different person, and they let me and they let me know about this job. And I'm like, all right, I'll go check it out. And then when, once we went to go check it out, it was back with Pearl and them again. It was the same place. So so when she was introducing us, I'm like, yeah, I already know her. And Pearl, she was like, hey, so you back? And I'm like, yeah. And then I had seen one of my, one of my childhood, like my brothers, he had came up in there, and we had got like hurt together. And that's how we found the program. And once I seen him coming in, I'm like, man, I ain't seen him in a minute. I'm like, this just gotta be meant to be for me to be here. If if two people bringing me to this place and telling me I should work and get started. For a lot of the future artists that's out there like that just getting into a glass blowing shop and don't really know, like don't really know how to do it, just keep going, you know, just cause you gonna get better at it. And for the people that is there like, yeah, just keep going. Cause I done seen a lot of people that came in, into the studio and, and that was good at what they did and they just quit it. They just got back into, they just fell off, you know? So I just say, just if you out there, keep going. You ain't the only black artists out there and getting your stuff like, and to showcase and stuff, just keep it pushing. Just you gonna, you gonna get that. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.